Let me tell you a story about my planet. Two centuries or so ago we were a peaceful, generally contented people. We had technology, traded with each other and life was good. Then came the Holocaust. What happened? War. Natural disaster. It was a natural disaster. There are two main land masses on our planet. The smaller one was prohibited, with ships going mainly among our main islands. The reason was that there was a predatory, huge species of insect there which we knew about. It sounds like an invasive species. How did it get to your continent? It was a ship that got caught in a storm, its crew swept overboard. It drifted near the coast, and the insects laid eggs in one of its flooded compartments. We found the wreckage near our coast. The life cycle includes the larval form which grows in water. When they change into adults, they drain the blood of animals in order to nourish their eggs. We have an insect like that on Earth. It is a range of insects actually. We call them mosquitoes. Not like these. Close your eyes. Let the computer guide you to a segment of our history. You only need to wish it.
Our armed forces are losing the battle. We need some way to escape. I have a plan. We can use our transporter technology in a different way. We can create mass storage devices, and keep our people in a state of non-existence. Then we can bombard our entire planet with gamma radiation to kill them off. That sounds like a reckless plan. How long do we have to stay in there? How would we keep people satisfied? I agree with my colleague. Keeping thousands of people in stasis and happy seems like a major undertaking. What choice do we have? We don't have enough spacecraft to take our people to the other planet. In six months we could all be dead. We will only need to be in there for about 50 years. The computer will create perfect conditions for us to keep the people satisfied. In about 50 years, our planet should have regenerated sufficiently to allow us to get back to reality. I think we will go with your plan. I will have to clear it with the president. In the meantime, get your infrastructure ready. Convert that old satellite to use for a controller. Get it done as fast as you can. Why did you bring us out of there? We were not done. We learned what happened to the Juno. The crew was terrified of a giant insect that appeared to them, and was taking them one by one. The captain wanted to stay and find out what was happening but the crew mutinied. In one final act of defiance, he ejected a probe with the ship's antimatter before taking an escape pod to planet C. The team there believes he hit his head and died there. The crew is still missing. We need to contact the ship. Let's all head back to the shuttle. The power has gone off. Shields are down. Call the bridge. We have received a communication from the Juno. The crew of our ship has vanished, and the ship's power levels are low. The Juno's power levels are still low too. Fortunately they still have power for transporters. We are headed for the Juno. I will beam on board for a conference. Prepare for liftoff. It was a quiet planet. We found an escape pod from the Juno, and it turned out to be the captain who had been on board. He died of a self-inflicted head wound. We found a portal station where the people were put into storage. It is part of a network. What about the station does it control the network? We are able to control the network, and bring the people out of the stasis or whatever it is. I suggest that us four meet on the station. It's cramped, but we need to bring everyone out of stasis to save the crew. Should we bring the Juno up to full power? Her antimatter supply has been replenished. Keep the power low, the way it is. I believe the station homed in on the power levels. We need to consider the prime directive before we do this. There is no growing culture here. Even if there was, we cannot leave our people behind. We will beam to the station. Begin bringing the people out of the system. Bring them back to the real world. It's working. People are returning. 
I am reading at least 100,000 people on the surface. So you are the tough guy, huh? Well you are not chasing me anymore. You want to fight? Well come on. What are you waiting for? I am Captain George Fannin of the Federation Starship Constitution. This is my science officer Samantha Sprite. Can you understand me? We are lost. We need help. Why don't you just stay? You can stay in peace. Stay forever. It is paradise. We will be here forever. Stay. You will be happy. Yes, stay. Everything is perfect here. Why would you not want perfection? Captain, I need to speak with you outside. This is not what it seems. I suppose you are going to tell me that we are in a computer simulation. I already know that. Vulcans are more expressive than these people, and they keep saying the same things over and over again. Well you beat me to it. We must find a way out of here. Look, Captain. Captain, I am what you humans call an artificial intelligence. I realize that a bad mistake was made by bringing you here. Your people are at the controls right now, freeing you and the people being kept in here. Captain's Log The crew of the Juno reappeared along with our crew, and about 100,000 people on the planet. The Juno crew will be confined to quarters, and we are aiding the planet's population with additional ships on the way. I don't understand this. He was reported as being alive. He was alive a long time ago. You see, he had the ability to move in and out of their virtual unreality. He could do it at will. I think he did not want to be trapped. Trapped? What do you mean by that? Those people were not living they were trapped in a computer loop. It played over and over again. It may have sounded ideal. But remember it was only a simulation. They were just part of a program. This old man preferred to live out his life, rather than become little more than a computer program. I think I prefer our own problem-filled ephemeral existence. Maybe that is what gives meaning to life. 